This issue of Experimental Physiology contains symposium papers on genomes, genes and genetics featured at the 10th World Congress on Neurohypophyseal Hormones held in July 2013 in Bristol. The Congress covered the broader theme of old hormones, new insights. The hypothalamic neurohypophyseal system integrates information about hydromineral balance and cardiovascular homeostasis and plays a vital role in lactation and parturition. It comprises the large vasopressin and oxytocin magnocellular neurons of the hypothalamic, paraventricular and supraoptic nuclei that project through the median eminence to terminate in the posterior pituitary gland from where the peptides are released into the bloodstream. These neurons are a cornerstone of neuroendocrine research, providing excellent physiological models that have yielded important insights into how neuropeptides and or neurotransmitters and their receptors function at the molecular and cellular level. In the first report, Lorenz Amar and her co-workers described the use of high-throughput Illumina sequencing to identify short non-coning microRNAs in hypothalamic arcuate nuclei. In general terms, microRNAs interact with the three prime untranslated regions of target mRNAs in a sequence specific manner, resulting in mRNA degradation and or repression of protein translation. The arcuate nucleus is an attractive target for microRNA led post transcriptional regulation because it is a hypothalamic hotspot for the control of whole body energy homeostasis via a complex interplay between a number of orexigenic and anorexigenic genes and by providing integrated signals to the hypothalamic paraventricular nucleus. MicroRNA profiling by Illumina sequencing represents the deepest microRNA sampling to date and has the potential to reveal novel microRNAs. Amar and co-workers argue the merits of sampling individual micro-dissected brain regions for microRNA expression profiling rather than pooled nuclei from a number of animals to facilitate the detection of possible genetic or epigenetic differences between individuals. They describe the basic steps in cDNA library construction for establishing microRNA expression profiles using Illumina sequencing. The sequences from seven individual arcuate nuclei were then analysed with the MIR Analyzer web server to identify known and or unannotated microRNAs. The challenge will be to identify the major targets of these microRNAs. That some targets are undoubtedly important is evidenced by studies that show that deletion of an enzyme, DISA, essential for producing the mature form of microRNAs in arcuate nuclei pro-opiomelanocortin neurons leads to obesity. It would also be interesting to see how hypothalamic nuclei microRNA expression profiles alter in response to changes in water or nutrient balance, which can be performed in parallel to compiling the expression profiles of coding mRNAs from the same cDNA library. Hiroshi Arima and his colleagues shift our attention to their findings on a mouse model of familial neurohypophyseal diabetes insipidus, or FNDI, and pose the question, how do these mice cope with an accumulation of unfolded or misfolded vasopressin precursor in neurons? FNDI is characterized by polyuria and polydipsia caused by a deficiency in vasopressin production. Vasopressin is synthesized primarily in the hypothalamic, paraventricular, supraoptic and suprachiasmatic nuclei. Besides maintaining water homeostasis, vasopressin also regulates vascular tone and hypothalamic pituitary adrenal activity and has many central behavioral effects. The authors established a mouse model of FNDI, in this case mutating the vasopressin carrier neurophysin 2, that is, cysteine 98 stop, one of more than 60 vasopressin gene mutations that cause FNDI in humans, which led to progressive polyuria. In FNDI mice, there are aggregates in the adenoplasmic reticulum of vasopressin neurons, and reduced vasopressin expression associated with decreased vasopressin mRNA polyatal length in the supraoptic nucleus. 
There is also diminished axonal expression of neuropicin 2, suggesting that mutant neuropicin 2 may reduce the trafficking of normal neuropicin 2 in FNDI mice by a dominant negative effect. Interestingly, there was no loss of vasopressin neurons in male FNDI mice up to 12 months of age, but there was vasopressin neuronal loss in females at 12 months. However, there was no evidence of apoptosis. Thus, progressive polyuria in FNDI mice could proceed in the absence of vasopressin neuronal cell death, in contrast to the autophagy described in a number of previous studies cited in this report. Arima and colleagues suggest that the mechanism underlying decreased vasopressin production in their FNDI mice is akin to processes involved in endoplasmic reticulum stress. They conclude that the shortening of vasopressin poly-A length in FNDI mice may result in decreased vasopressin mRNA stability and decreased vasopressin in FNDI mice, or that the decreased vasopressin poly-A tail may be a cellular protective mechanism to diminish accumulated mutant vasopressin. It would be interesting in future studies to examine the effects of other FNDI vasopressin mutations in the context of endoplasmic reticulum stress, perhaps by recapitulating the mutant in cell lines. Next, Christian Gruber provides an overview of efforts to discover oxytocin and vasopressin-like peptides in invertebrates using genome mining approaches. Genome mining is typically performed using publicly available sequence similarity search tools, such as TBLAST-N from the National Centre for Biotechnology Information, and other methods that give structure prediction and sequence alignments. The evolution of oxytocin vasopressin-like substances and their cognate G-protein coupled receptors, beginning some 600 million years or so ago, has long been regarded as a fine example of the co-evolution of two lineages of peptides, that is, ligands and their receptors, and provides the basis for sequence comparisons across invertebrate and vertebrate animals. Gruber relates that in the ant genomes, the sequences and functional domains of the precursors for oxytocin vasopressin-like peptides, called inotocins, are remarkably well conserved. In addition, the corresponding receptors for these peptides show high similarity. The author also presents new sequences for the oxytocin vasopressin-like equivalents in other arthropods, such as mites and a centipede. Again, these peptides show high similarity to the homologues in nematodes, mosques, annelids and vertebrates. A useful summary provided on the function of oxytocin vasopressin-like peptides in invertebrates shows that the oxytocin vasopressin-like peptides are involved in neurotransmitter hormone-like functions throughout invertebrates. Gruber mentions in passing that not all species appear to have these oxytocin vasopressin-like peptides or their receptors. This interesting point was elaborated on previously in other studies where it was noted that the genes for the oxytocin vasopressin-like peptides and their receptors appear to have been lost at least twice during evolution. For example, dropped from members of the honeybee, mosquito, fruit fly and silkworm genomes. The reasons for these gross deletions are unclear, but it is possible that another hormonal neurotransmitter system took over the function of oxytocin vasopressin-like peptides. Finally, Gruber highlights that the genome mining approach applied to invertebrates could reveal new oxytocin vasopressin-like lead compounds with their natural amino acid substitutions that may have enhanced specificity for members of the family of human vasopressin V1A, V1B and V2 receptors and the oxytocin receptor. This approach appears to be bearing fruit because they have already found one peptide, conopressin T from cone snails, which appears to act as a specific antagonist for the human oxytocin receptor. In the final report, Chris Murgatroyd discusses the effects of early life adversity on the vulnerability to stress in later life in the context of epigenetic changes. 
Epigenetic modifications of the genome, such as those involving alterations in DNA methylation, provide a mechanism by which early life events and or the environment can have lasting effects on overall health and can influence future generations. As an example, Murgatroyd describes the epigenetic change to the vasopressin gene that ensue following a model of maternal separation during early postnatal life in rats. Numerous stresses increase vasopressin synthesis in parvocellular paraventricular nucleus neurons from where it is secreted into the hypophyseal portal blood to act on pituitary vasopressin V1B receptors to release adrenocorticotrophic hormone, or ACTH, into the bloodstream. ACTH triggers glucocorticoid release from the adrenal cortex as a key mediator of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal neuroendocrine response to stress. Studies from the author's laboratory showed that maternal separation reduces DNA methylation at a downstream promoter of the vasopressin gene, leading to a persistent increase in vasopressin mRNA expression in the parvocellular paraventricular nucleus neurons, and consequently sustained hypothalamic pituitary adrenal hyperactivity to stress, that is, hypersecretion of corticosterone, and behavioural changes that lasted for at least one year. The underlying mechanism for the change in vasopressin gene expression appears to involve hypomethylation of specific cytosine guanine dinucleotide residues in the vasopressin gene enhancer that impair the ability of another protein, methyl CPG binding protein 2, to bind to this methylated DNA with the subsequent relief of repression of the vasopressin gene. Some questions remain. How stable are these and other epigenetic changes? Are they permanent or are they reversible or plastic? Are the vasopressin gene methylation patterns transmitted across generations? Are they gender specific? Are they applicable to other stresses in early life? A significant impact of these findings is that, in some cases, it may help to explain the altered hypothalamic pituitary adrenal activity associated with some mood disorders, such as depression. Establishing the mechanisms of how early life experiences can alter the expression of critical genes involved in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal response to stress should ultimately enhance our understanding of how we cope with stress throughout life. Together, these symposium reports provide concise, timely, up-to-date and thought-provoking summaries of our current knowledge of aspects of neuroendocrine microRNA profiling, vasopressin gene regulation, synthesis and secretion, and the evolution of oxytocin and vasopressin-like peptides. They point to future studies that have possible translational significance.